is Dana of Days Crochet, and I am going to teach you the last item in my spa set, which is a washcloth. And for this, it's very, very simple. I don't do anything fancy. Um, my washcloths take me a little bit longer to make. I try not to make things that are too time consuming that I sell because, you know, time is money. So I don't make a ton of these, but I do sell them very well. I'm almost guaranteed to sell every one of them. So uh, people love washcloths. And I, I like to make these kind of large. Number one, I have huge hands and I can't stand little tiny rags that don't even cover my entire hand. So I make mine rather large and I also make mine with a little hook or excuse me, loop that is similar to my soap sack loop on the corner. That way they can be hung up easily for air dry. I am also using the comfy cotton blend that I use for the rest of my items that I've already shown you how to make. And this particular color is my best seller, which is Flower Garden. There is a lot of yardage on these cakes and you can get quite a lot of items out of it. From each cake, I usually profit about 40 to 45, sometimes $50, depending on what I decide to make with it. Um, so to begin, you're going to need an eye hook. I went up a hook size from the face scrubbies and the soap sacks, if you've noticed. And the reason that I do that is because this is a really dense stitch pattern, and so I don't need quite so small a hook. And because time is money, I also feel like it goes a little faster with a bigger hook. You will also need scissors, of course, and you will also need a nylon transparent thread. This is um, to sew down the ends at the end because I know that this is going to be washed quite a lot. And of course, you'll need a yarn needle to weave in your tails. Okay, so to begin, I've made a chain here to save time of 30. I crochet kind of loosely. So if you want to take out your tape measure and measure, mine equals about nine inches um, or about 23 centimeters. Um, if you would like to make yours bigger, it's really simple. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter. Just make an even number of stitches. And to begin the pattern that I use, I'm not sure if there is a stitch pattern for this. I thought I was doing the lemon peel stitch, but it turns out I am not. So I don't really know what stitch this is called, but it is a rather dense stitch. If you are familiar with the lemon peel stitch, this that would work for this project as well. But um, I do it just slightly different. So what I do is I skip the first two stitches and I make a single crochet and a double crochet in that third stitch from the hook. And then I'm going to skip a stitch and do a single crochet and a double crochet in the next chain. And I'm going to skip the next one and do a single and a double. And this is what I do the entire way across. And this creates just a very subtle ribbing pattern. Nothing fancy, but like I said, it does create a more dense fabric so that, you know, you can use it to wash your body or your pots and pans. <laughs> your dishes, really. It's not more, it's not a scrubber, really, but it does have a bit of texture in case you would like to use it to wash your dishes. And again, I know this is not 100% cotton, and I know that a lot of people would probably disagree with me on this. I do not always use 100% cotton for my washcloths um, and such, but like I said, it doesn't shrink as much. It is very soft and it has really beautiful colors that my customers really seem to enjoy. And I don't remember ever reading a law that said you had to do all of your washcloths out of 100% cotton. I'm nearly to the end. And now in this next stitch, I'm just gonna do a single crochet in that last stitch. All right, so you're gonna chain one and turn. 
this is done in the row you're going to skip the first stitch and you're going to do a single crochet and a double crochet in that first or in that next stitch rather you're going to skip the next stitch do a single crochet and a double crochet so if you're paying attention to the row below you're basically doing the single crochet and the double crochet in the top of the double crochet from round or excuse me row one all the way across so I'll meet you at the end of row two okay so I just finished um, making the last single crochet and double crochet of row, row two and I'm going to do a single crochet in the top of that last stitch there and I'm going to chain one and turn I'm going to skip the single crochet I just made and make a single crochet and a double crochet in the top of the double crochet in the row below skip it go into the single make a single and a double excuse me in the top of the double crochet so basically you're making a single crochet and a double crochet in the top of every double crochet below all the way across so we're repeating this row and I just keep repeating it until I get the size that I feel is comfortable for my ginormous hands <laughs> which I believe is approximately about nine and a half inches so it's rather large most people do not make their washcloths this big but personally I, I consider what I feel comfortable purchasing whenever I consider what my customers might want and I feel like I know it is going to shrink because it's cotton and I don't want it to be so small that they don't really have much to work with when they're using it to wash the, either themselves or the, the dishes. So uh, just keep that in mind when you're trying to decide what you would like to make. If you're making these for gifts, eh, it doesn't matter. It's not like beggars can be choosers. They're not going <laughs> to be upset with you. Okay, and so I'm to that last stitch there. I'm going to put a single crochet in the top. And I'm just going to keep repeating that row where you chain one and skip the first stitch. And you're basically making a single crochet and a double crochet in the same stitch, the double crochet stitches of the row below every time. And you end with a single crochet on the end as you can see is a very dense stitch and it looks very nice and then when it gets to be about nine and a half inches or about 24 centimeters long I will get back to you on how I finish okay so here we are I've got my washcloth pretty well finished I decided to make a more of a square so this is nine inches by nine inches here I can't tell you how many rows I did because I don't count this is kind of like mindless crocheting for me this is good for when you're watching TV or something <laughs> anyways so I've gotten to the last stitch and by the way I wanted to reiterate when you are doing each row don't forget to do your last single crochet at the end um, I forgot to mention earlier you should have 29 stitches across after each row okay now for the little loop that I uh, make to hook onto something for it to dry I chain loosely 15 4 5 6 7 8 9 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. All right, now I'm gonna turn my work. 
and I'm going to slip stitch into the top of the single crochet of the last stitch of the round or the row excuse me okay and because this is going to get a lot of wear because it's it's going to be wet while it's drying um, I went ahead and I slip stitch up the side all the way around so don't chain one because you really don't want the extra bulk so basically you're gonna skip that first one so you're not gonna have all 15 okay so I'm going to go into the next one and I'm gonna slip stitch loosely all the way around till I get to the other side and try not make sure you're not twisting your your loop make sure you're going into the consistently the stitches whether it be the backbone or one of the side loops of the chain it doesn't really matter for this oops because you are just reinforcing but you don't want to twist it make it look tacky so when you get to the opposite end where you began your chain you should have 14 because we skipped that first one so here I am in the last one now this is up to you you can go ahead and slip stitch back into the single crochet that you ended on the last row or you can fasten off and then weave your end in real tight um, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and slip stitch and now I'm going to fasten off, leaving myself a bit of a tail. And I'm going to take my yarn needle and weave into the washcloth itself. And as I have said with all of my other spa items, I have take this nylon thread and I actually sew the tails down on each end so that when it gets frequent washings it does not come apart and I do that because I want people to associate things being well made with my brand. Um, I also wanted to make a quick mention that another reason that I like this stitch, whatever it is, I'm not sure what it's called, um, I don't have to do a border on this. If you'll notice, each side looks the same. So I don't have to do a border, which is really nice when you're making these. Uh, it's kind of tedious to have to make a border. So um, that's another reason I like to do the chain 30, you know, and then the single crochet, double crochet you know, across because I feel like it just makes a really nice fabric. Anyways, I hope that you enjoyed these tutorials. Please, if you have any questions or comments, leave them below. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you have any requests of things you would like me to show you how to make, please let me know.